Hi, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex Effects, AKA The Rig Doctor, and today I have the distinguished pleasure of showing you the rig build that I did for Raphael Sadiq. If you haven't heard of Raphael Sadiq, my question to you is where have you been? This guy has been among the best music making artists in the world since the 1990s when I was a kid. He was with Tony, Tony, Tony. He was working on the D'Angelo Voodoo album, one of my favorite albums of all time. His solo work is incredible. His work as a producer is incredible. And I'm super honored to be working with him on this project. Now, the way that we got introduced was from my good buddy, Eric Walls, that was doing some studio work for Raphael down in LA. And if you remember one of our videos with Eric a few years ago when we were prepping his rig for the Tony Braxton tour, he is an absolute great player as well, total monster, and we're so grateful to him for introducing us to Raphael. Now, Raphael needs something that combines all of the different eras of tones that he loves, from the vintage 60s and 70s stuff, clear up through now, and we're incorporating all those tones into one studio pedal board. This thing's gonna be big, but it's gonna have everything on it. So we're about to head over, see Raphael's studio down in LA. He's gonna take us through what he needs and what he has and figure out exactly what's gonna go on this board. So let's go and check that out. Now this is a uh, home. Right on, man. This is a great space. Yeah. How'd you find this? Or you guys obviously had to build this out. No, well I built this out. Yeah. But, um, I've had it for like 15 years. I've been here for like 15 years. Yeah, so this is a uh, long could give these pedals. Did uh, is, what, so what ended up like we could you know we kind of gave you a few of these guys to check out. What ended up working out? On the Nile. It's just got the vibe, man. Big pedals have a vibe. They're they're like not at all practical now, but <laughs> all right. Well, I think that that gives me what, what uh, kind of the directive, and then I'll just continue to check in with you as as the thing starts to materialize, and you can tell me what works, what doesn't. Okay. Yeah, that works for me. Super cool and hip spot that Raphael has. Absolutely amazing. Love that he had us in to kind of check out the vibe of the studio and his workspace. It's absolutely amazing but let's look at what we're actually gonna be putting on the board. Now that we've kind of settled on everything, everything has arrived to us, and we're gonna begin the building process. We're gonna start first with some really cool wah pedal and volume pedal. We're going with Dunlop all the way around here. We have the Dunlop Volume X for volume, and we have one of the Crybabies, again, also manufactured by Dunlop. The Clyde McCoy version sounds absolutely great. It's wonderful for those vintage tones that Raphael's going for. We also have a plethora of fuzzes here. We have an old vintage Dallas Arbiter fuzz in addition to a Wren and Cuff big muff style fuzz to go along with this thing. Raphael's no stranger to those vintage 60s tones and we wanted to bring that Hendrix vibe going with an oldie but a goodie with the prescription electronics vibe unit. Just has a great look with that swirl paint and is definitely gonna bring the essence of the 60s to anything that he runs through that. Raphael also has a couple of Vertex pedals on there. He's got the Nile compressor trying to go for some of those vintage Nile Rogers vibes. He's got the dynamic distortion for some higher gain lead and overdrive tones and the steel string to get a nice boost that adds a little bit of that fatness and coloration of a clean dumble. We're also throwing in a few Pigtronics kind of noisemakers that do some ring modulation, that do some synthy stuff. This is really cool for doing some of the Bootsy Collins stuff and the Sly and Family Stone type stuff. Really great pedals for doing some of those type of effects. And then we have some classic delays with the Memory Man, going with the Echoplex from MXR slash Dunlop for some of the delays, and then bringing in some reverb from the guys over at Earthquaker Devices. 
All in all, the pedal selection is a dream of some of the best vintage, boutique, and modern pedals out there. So this is gonna be a really cool build that I think is gonna sound absolutely incredible. Now for the surface that we're building on, we're doing everything on a custom made version of our Vertex pedal boards. Now, as you may know, all of our pedal boards are manufactured by fixed pedal boards. And so we did just contact my good buddy, Tim and Roy over there and had them make this custom to size. And if you did ever want a Vertex pedal board that was custom to size, you could always contact fixed pedal boards about them making you a custom size that isn't listed on our website as it normally would be. And you can check for the link to their website and email addresses in the description if you're interested in that. The other thing I wanna mention is power. For all this, we're gonna be using two Strymon Zumas, high quality switch mode power supplies, and we're gonna be running that into a power strip to route it nicely out to one single IEC, so there's just one power plug in, powers the entire rig. You might have seen us do something similar to this on the Rhett Shoal rig, which you can check out above. Really cool rig build for a really cool player as well. Also for buffering, we're building a custom buffer interface here using the DIY buffer style kits that we've done videos on that you can check out. We're gonna be building him multiple different buffers in here and even though the system is all in mono, we're gonna do a split out. So there's one side that goes to one amp and the same exact mono signal will go to another amp. So both of them get the same mono signal. It's all gonna be transformer isolated through the Laylee P split. When we're doing that buffered splitter output, we're also going to have a buffered insert that's going to come after the fuzz devices because again, we never want to have buffers hitting the input of fuzzes. Fuzzes are impedance sensitive, especially stuff like the fuzz face. So we're going to bring in the buffer after the fuzzes. So we still get a high quality buffer driving the line through the pedals, but there's not going to be one very first. But luckily, all the devices up front are all true bypass, so we don't need to worry about any real appreciable tone suck happening until we hit that input buffer following the fuzzes. So with any pedal board rig build, we always observe the holy trinity of tone. If you're not aware of what that is, the first pillar of the holy trinity of tone is high quality buffers. And as I said before, we're gonna be buffering the output of this with a splitter, and we're gonna be buffering the input following the fuzz devices. And I'll even link the wiring diagram for it, so if you wanted to replicate what Raphael is doing, you can make the same exact buffer interface for yourself. The second pillar of the holy trinity of tone is using a high quality isolated and preferably switch mode power supply, which we have here in spades. We have two Strymon Zuma power supplies, very high quality switch mode power supplies, using both of them to power the entire board. And it does everything that we need, including powering those hard to power pedals like the Deluxe Memory Man and also the Vibe unit, which doesn't have a traditional nine volt DC input on it. And the third pillar of the Holy Trinity of Tone is of course having high quality soldered patch cables. Throughout the whole entire rig, we're gonna be using Mogami 2314 with square plugs. And if you're interested in having us make custom versions for you, we offer that all on the rigdr.com. Before we get started, I need to talk about layout. What I do first is I like to put the pedals down in the approximate order that I think that they're gonna be in and where they need to live on the pedal board. Because Raphael is right footed, we're gonna put all the treadle style pedals on the right side of the pedal board. So that's the volume pedal and the wah. We're then gonna put everything else as close to sequenced as possible. That's gonna help keep our cable runs as short as possible and that we have the least amount of cable possible in connecting each input to output in the series of effects throughout the pedal board. We are gonna have to make some longer runs to come back to the buffered insert after the fuzzes, but because the fuzzes are relatively close to where the actual buffered patch bay is gonna be, shouldn't be too big of a deal and is adding minimal amounts of cable even though we have to disrupt the signal in that particular place. After I have everything laid out and appropriately spaced out and locked down onto the pedal board, I like to go next to doing all of the power cable assembly. I always like to just take the pre-existing cables that come in this case with the Strymon Zuma and shorten them to length based on the exact length that they need to be. I terminate on the power supply end with a Kobecon 2.1 millimeter by 5.5 millimeter barrel connector. Those are all linked in the description if you want to replicate this on your own rig. 
And I always like to start with the pedals, putting the DC connectors into the back of them, already terminated with the molded end, and then routing them all into the power supply. So I have a nice flow going from the furthest part away from the pedal board from the power supply and routing it all toward the power supply bringing in each subsequent cable as I run into each subsequent pedal, moving again furthest away from the power supply into the power supply, which you can see me doing here. Once I have everything where it needs to be, I'll move into my audio routing. As I said before, I'm using square plugs in combination with Mogami 2319. This is the standard cable that I always use and was one of the best performers in our cable shootout video that you can check out above where we shot out most of the common cables out there and still found that this was one of the most versatile whether you had a high gain or low gain amplifier and whether you used a Strat more or less Paul. I'm soldering all these by hand and making sure that we have gas tight connections. Again, using something like a solderless cable here would really be inferior to the longevity of the cable and we want to make sure that Raphael can use this board on studio, on stage, and that it's going to work flawlessly and reliably for decades. The only way to ensure that is making sure you have high quality connections, gas tight connections, that's going to require soldering these. And if you want to have cables just like this, you can always check them out again on the rigdr.com where we make these custom to length and you can purchase them there. So now that we're done with the pedal board, I'm going to take this back to Raphael's studio. We're going to get his impressions. He's going to test it out for us, see how he uses it. Again, I'm really excited to see this kind of grand reveal. I've been showing him a few pictures here and there as I've been going that we've been texting, but I really can't wait to get in his hands and see what he does with it in his actual context of his studio. And then he finally has a real studio rig, which he's really never had. He's just used stuff individually. So to be able to have it all consolidated, I'm really excited to see what he thinks. So let's go and head over to Raphael's place and bring him this pedal board. This is cool. So this is it. Ta-da. Yes. Looks like everything I thought it would look like from what I've seen. I guess it's not technically your first time seeing it. Nah, well, I've seen a little bit of it, like, you know, digitally on the phone, but yeah, seeing it like this is pretty crazy. Cool, well, take it take it for a ride and let's, yeah. let's see what it can do under the hands of the great Raphael Sadiq. Oh, what an intro. <laughs> A lot of guitar music. <laughs> but I can plug my bass in it too. Because the way I used to have my pedals, I'm really trying to compete with, um, with my Ableton. Really, so I don't have to go in inside of Ableton to use those great effects that they have inside of Ableton. But I always kind of wanted my own analog setup where I can, you know, growing up playing bass most of the time. Um, I even know how to use it. I kind of knew I'd mess with some pedal, like the small stone for my bass, you know, envelope filters. But if, as far as guitar, it was just way too complicated, way too many. Bass, you just have trouble, but bass and volume. But um, I started getting into effects. Like my partner, Rob Bacon, he's, um, you know, I call him the touch of a button because he could touch one button, but bing, and it'd be a whole different sound. So we would come to sound check, and before I get there, the Rob will be setting my pedals up for me. <laughs> so I finally was like, okay, I gotta like, I gotta figure something out. So this is gonna be like a great writing tool. That's what I like the, the most about it, because I'm, I'm more creative on um, piano because there's so much real estate, you know. But today, if I could match the creation of having a pedal board, like I can, I can match up on the piano, you know. And I think that is like. For me, it's like an even kill. I just need this much create creativity on the floor that I do having real estate on a piano or in Ableton. So this is like, this is the go. I haven't even, I don't even know if I'll be able to get into like the craziness that I'm gonna get into when I'm really in this room. Like I'm leaving it right here. I'm leaving it right here. So I have all this here, my setup here, the piano here and 
my drums back here, my organ right here. So this is how I'm probably finish up two albums. This is going to be it. I don't know what the hell I'm going to be recording, but it's definitely going to be for the radio. <laughs> So that was our rig build for Raphael Sadiq. Again, one of my absolute favorite artists, just so influential, has done so many things, has worn so many hats, is a fantastic singer, a fantastic bass player, great guitar player, has gotten some of the most iconic tones, some of my favorite records he worked on of all time, like I said before, with D'Angelo's Voodoo. Just an absolute cool guy, and I'm just so glad that he thought of us and that Eric Walls introduced us so that we could actually get this rig done for him. So I hope he enjoys it. It seems like he's gonna, and I think that this is gonna be something that we're gonna hear on a lot of his music in years to come. This is gonna be an inspiration machine for him. So thank you very much for watching, for checking this out. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw today, I highly recommend that you leave us a comment, tell us your favorite part or one of your favorite pedals that was on his rig, give us a thumbs up. Those things all help in making sure that more people get a chance to see this video. Also, if you wanna check out any of the materials that we use to build this rig, that's all linked in the description. We have everything linked from the power cables to the patch cables. Everything that we used is there, so do check that out if you're curious. And we also offer consulting so you can build a rig just like the one we built for Raphael. If you're curious about what these techniques are or you want some one-on-one -on -one coaching, we offer that over on therigdr.com. So definitely check that out as well. Again, thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex Effects, aka The Rig Doctor. See you later.